All right. Again, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining us for uh, Live PC, Give PC Giving Day Strategy. That's what we're here to focus on today. Of course, we're all excited for the event coming up in November, and now is a really great time to uh, dig in, if you haven't yet, on really uh, focusing on your campaign strategy to make this year's event even more successful than it maybe has been in the past for your organization. See how you can really step it up and and make this campaign count for your nonprofit. My name is Bethany. I've been working with uh, the team at Park City Community Foundation for a few years now on this event. Happy to be able to partner with the team. Um, I will also mention that Ollie Wilder from the foundation is on with us today. So uh, we might be hearing uh, him chime in at some point throughout, but just to let everyone know he is here. A quick review of the agenda that we're going to cover today. Uh, we'll start with a few Giving Day basics. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we already hosted a, a webinar earlier this month, um, or perhaps end of last month, uh, that really focused on more of the basics, how to's, how to manage your page, how to access your donations report, uh, all of those basics about getting started. So we'll cover just briefly today some of those things, but if you're looking for a little bit more uh, information on those basics and how to use the platform, definitely check out the nonprofit toolkit on the site uh, for access to that uh, recording for that first webinar for more information. Then we'll spend the bulk of our time today talking about campaign strategy so that whether this is your first year participating in this event, your third year, your fifth year, there's always something new you can learn. There's always something that you can do differently, uh, better, uh, try new this year. So we'll try to cover uh, lots of different options there uh, and things that all organizations should be keeping in mind when planning that strategy. We'll spend a little bit of time going over some of the exciting leaderboard prizes that are available for nonprofits as a part of this campaign. As you know, um, aside from all the great uh, fundraising that you do as an organization and the funds that you bring in directly for your organization, you have the potential to win extra prizes from the Park City Community Foundation as a part of this event and the sponsors that they have on board. So uh, an exciting opportunity above and beyond what you can bring in uh, directly for your organization. And we'll leave some time at the end for Q&A. So as I mentioned, please feel free to type into that go to webinar control panel at any time throughout the presentation if you have questions and we'll make sure to leave time at the end to address any questions. All right, so again, starting here with just a quick overview of some of the basics. First and foremost, uh, nonprofit registration is key. So if you haven't yet, please make sure you fill out the nonprofit registration form on livepcgivepc.org ASAP. The deadline to register is September 30th, so we're coming up close to that right now, but no need to delay. Uh, it's a very short form to fill out. Uh, you do need a copy of your Utah Charitable Solicitation Permit uh, when you do fill out that registration, but it's a very quick and easy form to fill out. Uh, once you are approved and you have access to your page, you will have the opportunity right through your settings, and I'll show you in uh, just a bit where you can access that. Um, You'll have the ability to add new administrators, remove old administrators, uh, so that you can make sure that anybody on your staff or organization that needs to have access to the page can do that. So for those of you that didn't catch our first webinar, uh, we spent a lot of time walking through uh, all of the tools available on the dashboard and how you can access uh, the most important things. Um, but I wanted to do a quick overview here for anyone that might have missed that or need a little refresher. Um, you've got your home screen. You're seeing a quick view of that here. That's going to be your key stats, key metrics, and a to-do list to walk you through some of the most important items to getting your page ready. Your profile, uh, this is that organization page that you're used to on your um, for your organization, this is where you can fill out to tell your story, add photos and videos, all kinds of great stuff. Donations tab, that's where you can access your donation data, customize the donor experience. 
and access any disbursement reports for uh, any disbursements that you receive after the event to reconcile. You do have access to a campaign screen. This is helpful um, if you've got multiple either projects, uh, fundraisers on behalf of your organization, either started by your organization or started by peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. You can manage and see all of them through your campaign screen. And finally, your settings tab uh, right at the bottom. That's where you can kind of manage your overall experience including, as I mentioned earlier, the ability to add or remove admins. So just a quick refresher again, if you're looking for more information on how to walk through the dashboard, check out that first webinar recording. So, <clears throat> of course, one of the, the key things about your uh, participation in this Giving Day is building out your nonprofits page. This is really, um, the core donation page that donors will be visiting and seeing before they make their donation. So you're going to do a lot of work through email and social media and word of mouth and all kinds of great things to get people to this page. So you've got to make sure that once they get to this page, it tells a really powerful story. It's got the look and feel that's going to connect them to your organization. It's going to make them want to take that final step and click donate to make their donation. So definitely worth it if you haven't spent the time yet so far. Take the time to really review this page. Maybe add a new background image, customize that theme color. Make sure that you're telling a powerful story here about why donors should give to your organization. The donation experience, I mentioned this um, briefly on the um, dashboard screen, uh, but something new this year is the ability to customize the donor experience a bit more than before, choose what data you collect from donors. You've always had the option to add custom donation suggestions, so explaining what $25 will do for your organization or what a $100 donation will do for your organization. But uh, this year, once you make any of those changes, you'll have an option to preview the donation experience. And I think this is a really important thing to do ahead of the event. Uh, visit this donor experience tab, which is accessible through your donations tab in that dashboard and click view checkout. And you can walk through the process that a donor will go through when they make their donation. So you can do that. You can share this with your executive director, maybe your board just to make sure everybody knows exactly what that donation process is gonna look like for donors. The other key piece of this donor experience tab is the post checkout. This is where you can customize the thank you receipt as you've always had the option to do. And then new this year, you have the option to build a thank you page in that post checkout um, tab. And on that thank you page, you can have a little bit more opportunity to to tell a dynamic story with your thank you and by that i mean just like on the main organization page you'll have access to an inline editor where you can add formatting uh, videos photos links so you can really make that thank you say something meaningful and then below that uh, you have the option to add a button and a link for where you want that button to take donors. So for example, if it's really important to you that you wanna send donors back to your homepage after they make their donation, you can do that. If you wanna send them to your blog, if you wanna send them to your Facebook page, wherever you might wanna send them, you have the option uh, to add that, to decide what the text of that button should be and the link that they should go to. So it gives you control for what that full uh, thank you experience really looks like for donors. So definitely take the time to both preview that donation experience and then customize that thank you experience. And you'll also have the option to preview the receipt and preview the um, thank you page as well. So important to take the time to review that uh, new tab this year. I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier the nonprofit toolkit. This is where um, you will be able to access that first webinar recording that I've mentioned a few times. Um, you can sign up for additional trainings for Live PC, Give PC. You can access all kinds of great resources, FAQs, how-tos, 
templates for social media and email, logos and photos, lots of really great things that you can borrow from this toolkit so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel and create everything for this campaign all on your own. So make sure that you take time to review that toolkit and see what exists in that toolkit that you can borrow from, uh, what might you be able to uh, repurpose and reuse to save you time, or in the case of some of the logos and photos, really jazz up some of the communications that you're doing for the campaign. All right, so again, looking for more basics, check out that first recording, and now we're gonna transition more into campaign strategy. So one of the first uh, important tips for campaign strategy is you don't have to wait. You can start securing donations as early as today for the event. Um, so it's a great way to kind of build momentum in advance of the campaign. Of course, the 24 hour giving day, there's a lot of urgency and excitement that comes with that 24 hours of giving. And you don't wanna hit your list on email too hard, too early that by the time November 9th comes around, people are over it. But you can do lots of uh, lots of fun, creative things in advance, asking close supporters for seed donations, posting save the dates, starting to mention it on um, email, newsletter, or social media, and giving donors the option to come and make their gift early. They'll be able to make their donation whenever they are on the platform. Um, whenever they come to do it, and it will just reflect on the leaderboard and count for your totals as a part of the event. So great way to kind of build some momentum and uh, secure those early donations so that when November 9th comes and you do your big email campaign and you get donors to your page, they're not seeing zero dollars already raised for your effort. They might see a little bit uh, of a start to that campaign and be more encouraged to make their donation. One of the most important strategies that I always recommend for a Giving Day campaign is to secure a matching grant. And at its most basic, the reason that a matching grant is a helpful strategy is the same exact reason that a Giving Day is successful on its own. People like that sense of urgency and sometimes they need that sense of urgency to know why they should make their gift today instead of just some time before the end of the year. So one of the great ways to reinforce that sense of urgency is by having a matching grant for your campaign. So during Live PC, Give PC, you can offer donors the opportunity to double their donation, double their impact. So when it comes time to um, securing a matching grant, there's a couple key steps to keep in mind. The first is, of course, prospecting. Who do you have? that might be a good fit to ask for a matching grant. This could be one of your board members. It could be asking all of your board members to come together to make a small donation that will add up to a meaningful matching grant for your campaign. It might be a corporate sponsor that has either supported you in the past or you're starting a new partnership with a corporate sponsor, and this is a really focused way to get them to give and a way that you'll be able to really um, make, uh, you'll be able to communicate their contribution because it's a match. You can post that on your page. You can share it in social media. Thank that corporate sponsor. So it's a donation opportunity that comes with uh, marketable impact, which can be really helpful for that corporate sponsor type of donor. Um, and the last type of donor I encourage you to consider for uh, securing a matching grant would be one of your major donors. End of year is coming up very soon. You may have a donor that always typically makes a large gift sometime during the year and they haven't made it yet, or they typically give it towards the end of the year. Why not reach out to that major donor and ask if they'll make that donation early in the form of a matching gift so that you can use that to encourage more activity to your campaign. All of these strategies, all of these types of um, individuals or groups are great prospects, again, depending on your relationships, who you have that you really can tap into. Identifying these groups is, of course, the first part. The next is cultivating them. 
So you may have a really great long-standing relationship with somebody and you can jump right to the ask. But for a lot of uh, potential donors here, uh, you'll wanna take time to communicate with them, get to know them, learn about what's important to them. And once you know what's important to them, of course, a corporate sponsor might have something very different to them than a major gift donor, or two different corporate sponsors might have very different goals um, or needs or interests as it relates to supporting your organization. So take the time to get to know what it is that your uh, prospective donor is really looking for. And then when you make your ask, you can really tap into that. So if you know a corporate sponsor is going to be interested in their availability, you know, their ability to be promoted, show them all the ways that you're planning to promote their match. You know, where are you going to include their logo? Are you going to mention them on social media, et cetera? Uh, for a major gift donor, there might be a very different uh, type of ask there. Their interest might be much more about impact and really focusing on what this match will able your nonprofit to do in terms of your programmatic impact. So take the time to learn about the motivations of these different prospective donors and then ask. And of course, when it comes to board members, don't hesitate to use that group to your advantage as much as you can. Your board is here to fundraise for you, to advocate for you, and something like Live PC, Give PC, and even the opportunity to um, give a match is a really focused way for them to get in on fundraising for your organization. So definitely don't hesitate to turn to that avenue uh, if you are not having other ones or if that seems like the most promising one. So once you've kind of gone through this process, you've got a couple options in terms of how to really make that match work for you. So on the, on the platform, you will have the ability to add that matching grant to your donation page. And it doesn't mean your donor has to give their donation through the platform, but you can just post it so that it's a display feature and getting those other donors excited about making their gift. But you've got a couple different options in terms of how you present that match. It can be a standard one-to-one -one match so that $1 of their donation equals, you know, two, uh, it equals $1 from your matching gift, or you could really amp it up, do a two-to-one match, do a three-to-one match to really see the impact levels go up for these donations. You also have the opportunity to combine a couple of small matches. If you get a few major donors that are interested, uh, you want to combine them to have one really sizable match, or you can post multiple matches throughout the day so that you have one early on in the day, another one that kicks in a little later, and then one getting you through the last of the 24 hours. You've got flexibility there. So work with your donors to see what's what's important to them uh, and strategize around how you think it's really going to um, affect and encourage donors to give. Because of course, uh, aside from the fact that you can double your donation totals, uh, part of that key benefit is what it's going to do, the effect that it'll have on the philosophy, the psychology of donors making their gift. And seeing that icon that there's a matching grant live, understanding that their donation has the potential to be doubled or tripled or whatever it might be, makes a difference for the donor when making their gift. So make sure you definitely post that match to your page. As I mentioned earlier, you do have the ability to name the matching grantor if you'd like. If they wanna remain anonymous, that's okay too. But if they don't, you can recognize them right on the page uh, along with the type of match and that countdown, which will be really valuable as you move throughout the day on Live PC, Give PC how much is left in your match and really adding to that sense of urgency. And aside from having it on your page, you'll wanna make sure that you really include the message of this match throughout your communications. So posting updates on social media when you are halfway to your match or meet your match, making sure you promote this match in an email campaign, get people even more excited about clicking on the link from your email to get to this page in the first place. So Secure that match and then really make it work for you by promoting it as much as possible. 
So moving down uh, the list here of some of the key strategies to keep in mind for a giving day, I always encourage organizations to think about how you can activate your ambassadors to help you in this campaign. And that means a lot of different things to different nonprofits. There's all different types of ambassadors, whether it's a fundraiser, uh, somebody who wants to help you spread the word, somebody who wants to come volunteer for you, who are your key people, who are your key supporters that you have the ability to engage and give them a job as it relates to this campaign. So one of the ways that we'll talk about it here is through the tool of peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, which you do have access to through this platform. And uh, there's a lot of really exciting benefits that come from trying peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. You will be sharing personal impact stories, right? You allow an individual that knows your organization, that loves your organization, that has seen your mission firsthand to share their story about why why your organization matters, why it makes such a difference in the community. That's gonna go a long way for uh, one, adding to your bank of uh, communications, content, and stories, but also that's gonna really help to acquire new donors because that individual, let's say, um, you know, this individual, Kevin, has been involved in your work before, has seen it firsthand, great. They can tell a powerful story they now share their page with their friends and family and kevin's uncle decides to make a donation to his page you may have never had contact information or the ability to reach kevin's uncle but kevin has reached out and now you have that new donor to your organization that you have the opportunity post event to take the time to really cultivate steward and get to know so you really can amplify your outreach reach more people all together, which of course will allow you to raise more funds, allow you to climb up the ranks in the leaderboard for this event. But one other thing I encourage you to consider is the benefit of cultivating stronger supporters in somebody like a Kevin. They've been involved, they've donated before. When somebody takes that next step of starting a fundraiser on behalf of your organization, you're kind of bringing them in to the inner circle. You're giving them the opportunity to advocate speak out and raise funds for your organization, that individual is gonna be much more committed than they were before. So that's a great development stewardship step with that individual, not to mention all the great extra benefit that their campaign will bring in. So if that wasn't uh, convincing enough, um, I just wanted to cover a few key steps for how to really try this. Maybe you haven't tried peer-to-peer -peer fundraising before, it seems a little daunting. Couple key steps to incorporate it into your campaign this year. First is identify individuals that this will make sense for. Not every supporter you have, not every close supporter you have will make sense to be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser, but consider who might be a person that really works for this. Uh, I think research is starting to show that younger generations in particular are much more willing to fundraise on behalf of an organization than uh, even directly donate. So this might be a great way to engage a specific audience of your supporters. Reach out to them directly, personally, and ask them to start a campaign. It might be the first time they've fundraised. You do it all the time for your organization, whether you're a volunteer or full-time staff member, it might be new to this individual. So that personal ask can be really helpful and important in encouraging them that it's an easy thing to take on and you'll be there throughout the process to help them with resources, tips, templates, whether it's photos they can use to add to their page, basic information about your organization's mission so that they can just focus on telling their part of the story about how they know your work and focusing really on the outreach, spreading the word to their friends and family. And when you try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, there are even more opportunities to make it fun and engaging by starting a team fundraiser. And all this really means is that you're grouping these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers together and creating a little competition among them. So by starting a team fundraising page for Live PC, Give PC, for example, you can have your own unique leaderboard on that team page 
with the different fundraisers that are kind of competing against each other in this friendly competition to raise funds for your organization. Again, all the same reasons that Live PC Give PC is exciting and engaging for participating nonprofits to have that friendly competition against each other, all in uh, all in the overall goal of raising funds for Park City nonprofits. You can encourage that same type of uh, same type of camaraderie and competition within fundraisers on behalf of your organization. So definitely something, especially for those organizations that have been around the block and you've tried all kinds of things with LibPC, this could be a really exciting way to really step up your game this year and see if you can't really see a noticeable impact in total dollars raised or total donors uh, giving to your campaign. Of course, um, no matter what you're doing for your campaign, uh, email is always gonna be one of the most important uh, means of communication, really spreading the word. So just a couple key things to keep in mind here as you think through your email strategy, setting out your plan between now and all the way through and after the giving day, Keep it short, sweet, and simple in your messaging. I can't tell you how many times I have seen nonprofit newsletters that go on and on and on, and you're scrolling and scrolling. Donors are not going to likely take the time to read all that. So keep it really focused. What is the key message? What is the most important and impactful message that you can tell them to get them to click on the big donate button that you have in that email and get to your donation page. A couple other things that you can do to really increase the effectiveness of your emails. Of course, segmenting your audiences. Don't send one email to every donor or supporter that has ever been involved in your organization. Take the time, if you can, to segment into a, just a couple key groups can make a difference. Donors who have made a gift so far this year versus donors that have not yet made a gift this year. Donors that have never given before versus monthly donors. Um, all different types of audiences that you might have, volunteers, alumni of your programming. Uh, think about the key segments. You don't have to over segment, you don't have to send 25 different emails, but think about just a few key segments that will make a difference for you and then once you do that, you can really tailor the messaging so that when you are telling your volunteers about Live PC, Give PC, you can speak to them in a way that acknowledges their past support differently than somebody who maybe has never made a donation before or who's already made their donation this year. So taking that time to segment is really important and it, and it definitely will have a return in terms of overall engagement with your emails, open rates, click rates. Couple other, of course, just standard best practices. Make sure your emails are mobile friendly and test them out on mobile in particular. Your donation page on livepcgivepc.org is very mobile friendly, but most people will open your emails on their phone before they even get to that page. So you've gotta make sure that their email experience, the ability to click that big donate button is very easy on mobile just as easy as desktop, uh, particularly on mobile, uh, but even across the donation experience, more than 50% of donors will likely be seeing your emails on mobile. So it's really important to uh, review that experience and feel just as confident in that mobile experience for email as you do desktop. And of course, A-B test whenever you can. There's lots of different things that you can A-B test on, and many email programs that you might use will have existing tools built in that you can use. So testing two different subject lines to see what leads to um, a bigger open rate. Uh, testing uh, different wording on your donate button. Uh, donate now versus give now. Um, testing different images in the body of your email to see which is more compelling for donors. There's all different kinds of things you can test so that over time you're making these slight adjustments and optimizing and really making sure that by the time we get to the most important emails in the middle of the day on Live PC, Give PC, 
you're really sending the best emails you possibly can that you know are really going to have the best effect and the most impact with your donors. So aside from email, of course, social media strategy is going to be a key piece of your overall communications for the giving day. So just a couple key things to think about and keep in mind when it comes to social media. The first is to post and go where your audience is. So there's all different kinds of social media channels out there. You don't need to post on every single channel there is. What's important is to see where your audience is, where do you have most of your followers, and where are your followers more engaged? Do you get more likes on Facebook or shares on Facebook or retweets on Twitter? Um, where is it that your audience really engages with you? Choose that and focus on that. That'll be a better use of your time and likely lead to a higher return because you're speaking to people where they're expecting to hear from you. Uh, something in terms of general strategy across any platform that you have access to, um, schedule your posts ahead of time, whether it's uh, Hootsuite or TweetDeck. There's a number of uh, tools that you can use to schedule posts ahead of time. And doing that will allow you to make sure, okay, we know we have at least five or six tweets scheduled throughout the day, and that'll allow either you, a volunteer, your communications coordinator, whoever is going to be in charge of social media on the day itself, it'll allow them to focus more effort on interaction, responding to comments or likes or shares or tweets, really engaging in conversation rather than just making sure we get out a post about our update at noon, get a post out about our campaign, get a post out about our matching grant. It'll allow that strategy to be more responsive and more engaging with uh, the individuals and the audience that is engaging with you on social. Um, this campaign is a great opportunity to uh, try out or set aside a budget for any boosted posts. So, of course, as we all know, Facebook has made a number of changes to uh, their algorithm and the news feed. And so organic reach for your posts you've likely seen going down over time just by nature of the way uh, Facebook algorithms work. So putting a little money behind a post, boosting your post will help to increase that organic reach. So, and you can really make a difference with just a small budget here. So definitely something to uh, keep in mind. Of course, also uh, what Facebook loves is interaction and shares. Uh, so the more of your audience that you can engage to share your content, to interact with your content, the more likely your organic reach will go up as well. Um, that also has to do with the content, of course, that you have on your post. Uh, native video in particular is something Facebook really prioritizes. Um, but of course, photos, videos, stories, things that are, people are going to want to engage with, they're going to want to uh, share or interact with. Um, and something that might seem really simple but is important to keep in mind is that you should always include a clear call to action in every post that you put up and a link for where you want them to go. Now, of course, with Instagram, links work a little differently. You'll put your link in your bio uh, and make sure people go there. Um, but when you can on Facebook and Twitter, of course, Make sure that you're making that direct ask, give now, share this, and include the link. Um, the most engaging post is not going to have a ton of impact for you if people don't have a direct action they can take right from that post. So for especially many of the organizations that I think are with us today and participating in this event, you've done it before. Uh, not just one year, but many years before, which means you have this existing list database of previous LivePC, GivePC donors that you have access to. And we talked a little bit about segmentation earlier. This is a really key list to think about in terms of segmentation. So the first step is, of course, go to your page and download a list of anyone who has given to your organization 
maybe last year in Live PC, Give PC, maybe two years ago. Um, it'd be interesting uh, to look back over a few years and see how that landscape changed over time. Did you have a lot of turnover year to year? Did you have really high retention when the majority of your donors from 2015 came back in 2016? Get a quick idea, a quick feel for how that already has worked for you in the past, and then make a really concerted effort to, to focus on this group this year to retain as many of those donors as you can. We all know donor retention is much more cost effective than new donor acquisition, but it's not always given the priority that it should be given that reality. So take the time to find that list of donors, work with them to increase their gift from last year. This is a really great example of a group that you know what they did last year. They've already shown some level of support. Work with them to bump that gift up this year. Give a little bit more, maybe double their gift, or maybe start a fundraiser, maybe make their gift into a match this year. There's lots of things you can do, uh, but even on a basic level, just bumping a $75 gift up to a $100 gift. So taking the time to kind of think through that strategy, find out who those people are and see what you can do uh, to get them to most importantly come back and support you again this year. But is there anything you can do to help move them up the needle as it relates to your campaign? And then this is a really important thing to pay attention to throughout the day itself. So halfway through the day, 3 p.m., whatever it might be, see who has donated to you uh, in this year's campaign and identify where there are key gaps of people that have made donations in the past, especially sizable donations in the past. Those are great people for personal follow-up, a quick phone call, a quick text message, a quick email, depending on your relationship with that donor. Reach out to them on the day personally and remind them about the event. This is a really important group. Again, they've already shown you they're interested in giving to your organization on this Live PC Give PC event. So make sure you give them all the opportunities that you can to participate again this year. And of course, as we know, the campaign does not end when the 24 hours of the event is up. So take the time now to think through what that follow up engagement strategy looks like, uh, both from that initial thank you, uh, aside from the thank you page and the receipt that they'll get, what does that thank you experience look like from your organization? Are there individuals that give it a certain level that are gonna get a phone call from your executive director or board members or a personal handwritten note? What does that thank you process look like to make that both prompt and personal wherever you can, especially for those uh, higher donors. And then beyond that immediate thank you, it's really important to take the time, whether it's one month after the event, two months after the event, to close the loop back with this group of donors to share the impact that the Giving Day campaign has had. So if you are raising money for a certain thing during the campaign, take the time to update them two months from now on what you were able to do with that. Uh, a new program you were launching, share stories from uh, people that have benefited from that program, a new truck that you wanted to buy, show pictures of that new truck in action for your organization, close the loop for them to really ensure that the donor that you have effectively used their donation and it's really made an impact for your organization. Of course, it's important to consider year round stewardship and communication and that Closing the loop from the giving day is just one way to do that, but that should tie into what does that year round strategy of communications look like. And of course, always important to take time to uh, think in particular what you're going to do for those first time donors that come in through this campaign. These individuals are very different, of course, than returning donors or people that have been involved for your organization for many years. This is a really critical time for those groups in particular, those individuals in particular, to turn them from a one-time donor into a 
uh, recurring retained donor. So take the time to think about what does that communication strategy look like? What are those extra touch points that might be necessary for those first time donors to make sure you really welcome them in, really onboard them into your organization? One thing that is new this year as a part of uh, Live PC, Give PC is that all participating organizations have uh, free access to a trial of the uh, Mighty Cause premium features during your campaign. So we'll cover just a few of the key things that you can do with that. Um, but exciting opportunity to test out some of these features that are really designed to help amp up your fundraising efficiency and effectiveness. Um, keep in mind, you will have access to these features through the event and then for a short time right after the event so that you can download any data reports that you might need for the campaign. If you'd like to continue using the premium features on a year round basis, you will have the opportunity to sign up to do that. Uh, you will pay to sign up and do that after the event if you've tested them during the event and you feel like they're really helpful for you. They're really allowing you to be a stronger, more effective fundraiser. So great opportunity to test these out. And so I wanted to walk you through just some of the key things that you can do with these premium features for your giving day campaign in particular. So you'll see as of today, a few new icons on that dashboard on the left-hand side of your screen. That supporters icon, analytics icon, calls to action. So we'll walk through what you can do with each of those. A uh, couple key things are connecting Google Analytics. For anyone that uses Google Analytics to track uh, website traffic uh, for your year round website, you can integrate um, this livepcgivepc.org donation page that you have so that you can track visits, traffic, sources to this page just the same way you would to your website. Uh, you can explore our supporters CRM donor database tool uh, and that will be pre-populated with any donor history uh, that has come through this platform in the past. You'll see those individuals and their details already filled out for you in that supporters tool. So you can play around with that, filter it, See, who, um, see who's made multiple gifts over time, who's given the most over time. Uh, this is great opportunity for prospecting for maybe those matching gifts, major gifts, also prospecting for who might make, be a good fit to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Um, but a great opportunity to really review some more detailed donor history for these supporters. Um, you can see a, a brief example here of um, each individual supporters page and the key access, the key information you have access to for each individual. So take the time to review that. Uh, you also have the opportunity through the calls to action tool to post a volunteer opportunity for Live PC Give PC. And there's lots of different ways you might want to use this feature, whether you're hosting a live event and you actually need somebody to man a registration booth or a silent auction. You can post an opportunity for that. Uh, or you might choose to uh, build into your Live PC, Give PC campaign the opportunity for individuals to kind of live your mission in action through a volunteer activity. So maybe it's hosting a community cleanup or um, passing out hot meals or doing a performance, whatever it might be that makes sense for your organization is an opportunity to kind of let these individual supporters live your mission in action. You can create volunteer opportunities in line with that and allow uh, individuals to sign up to participate in those um, volunteers. Uh, one of the key tools that I think is really has the potential to be helpful for organizations as a part of this event is our data connect tool which you can access through the supporters tab on your dashboard data connect is really our answer for allowing you to automate and integrate as much as you possibly can throughout uh, as many different uh, tools that your organization might use so through this tool 
there are over a thousand different external applications that you can connect with. Tons of really exciting ones, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Campaign Monitor, Autopilot, just a handful of the email tools that you can use that will allow you to set up an integration so that a new donor can automatically get added to a contact list in MailChimp or Constant Contact for you, saving you that manual data entry time. Same with uh, Salesforce, if that is a uh, CRM system that you use externally, you can set up an integration to get your uh, donation data automatically uh, added into Salesforce. You can set up thank you tweets or Facebook posts for new donors. Uh, you can even set up a personalized thank you email to come from the Gmail account of your executive director after a donor makes a donation. Uh, so lots of really cool things to explore, things that you can automate uh, to hopefully save your organization time uh, as it relates to uh, making your giving day campaign successful and then following up uh, and entering data after the event. So now we'll just take a brief minute to talk about some prizes for Live PC Give PC. Of course, uh, we've got the all exciting leaderboards. Uh, so there will be one leaderboard for all nonprofits participating. This will rank on uh, based on the most unique donors. So the organization uh, that has the most unique individuals that give to their uh, campaign throughout the day. Uh, top three groups will receive prizes at the end of the 24 hours. So really great opportunity to keep an eye on that leaderboard as you go throughout the day. Uh, that'll be available on the livepcgivepc.org homepage and see how your organization is doing to encourage internal efforts to uh, improve your ranking on there. And don't hesitate to share your ranking on social uh, with your supporters to activate them to help you move up the ranks. If you're in fifth place and only the top three get a prize, that's a great opportunity to encourage your donors to take action right away because their action can give you the opportunity to walk away with even more prize funds. Aside from that main leaderboard, there will be several uh, issue area leaderboards just as there have been in the past years. These will be based on uh, details selected by your organization in that registration process. And similar to that first um, leaderboard, it will also rank on uh, the number of unique donors that have given to your page. And again, the top three organizations will have the opportunity to walk away with extra funds. So that means with all of these different leaderboards and the top three groups in all of these different leaderboards having a chance to win, that's lots of organizations that have a really good opportunity to walk away with prize funds. So definitely use that to your advantage. Make sure you know what leaderboards you're on and keep an eye on them throughout the day and see if you can't really use them to encourage more activity and engagement from your donors. And with that, I will open it up to any questions that have come in so far. If you have any questions that you haven't asked yet, please feel free to type them into that side panel and uh, we'll answer them for a few minutes here. All uh, right, great question. Uh, somebody is, uh, reaching out uh, who has a lot of projects on behalf of their organization um, and wondering a better way to kind of see them all in one place and that would be through that campaign screen so uh, something that you might not have had in the past but is available this year uh, on the left hand dashboard of your organization page there is a campaigns icon clicking on that will open up a tab for you which will show you kind of in a table format, all of the campaigns that have been started for your organization over time, give you a quick way to see uh, any active campaigns, ended campaigns, and then uh, either download the information uh, or do what you need to do to manage each of those campaigns. So hopefully that's helpful. 
Uh, another great question of copy of the presentation. This will be uh, the recording of this webinar will be available on livepcgivepc.org on the nonprofit toolkit, and we'll try to get it up uh, either later today or first thing tomorrow morning so that you have access to uh, the full recording. And uh, that's all the questions that we have for right now. Um, but please feel free to reach out to support at mightycause.com if you have any questions as you're moving throughout your campaign. And uh, good luck with your Live PC, Give PC fundraising. Thanks, everyone.